Making an Android app in itself is not all that hard once you get the basics right. Making a maintainable app is a whole different story though. You have to give your code a firm structure, prevent yourself from putting all the code inside an activity or a fragment and make many smaller classes which have a single responsibility. How can you achieve all of this? With architectural parents. MVC, MVP, MVVM, which stands by the way for model view view model. And while anything is better than the dreaded spaghetti code, MVVM is one of the best options for Android development. It's even fully supported and encouraged by Google with their first party libraries. Hello, welcome to Riso Coder, and in this video you are going to learn all you need to know to have an idea about what MVVM model view view model actually is. As much as I don't like theory, sometimes it's just important to know before jumping into actual coding. There is nothing worse than writing code that you don't understand. In another video, you will create a real app demonstrating the principles outlined in this theory-centric video. So make sure you subscribe and also hit the bell button so that you are notified about all of my new videos, including this one. Also, if you want to go through the contents of this video at your own pace and have a nice, slow look at them, you can do so by reading an article over at resocoder.com, to which you can get by clicking on the link in the video description. So now, without any further ado, let's get started with MVVM on Android. First up, why do we even need something like model view view model? Well, it's separation of concerns. And separation of concerns is a beautiful thing and every single design pattern tries to do the best that it can to achieve it. In the case of model view view model, there are three different parts which help in accomplishing the separation of concerns. Models, views and view models. We can also add and actually should add a repository which acts as a single source of truth for all the data that you are getting. And we will come back to single source of truth in the form of repository later. Now let's dissect the different parts of MVVM and we will start with view. In the context of MVVM, view doesn't mean the base class of all of your text views and recycler views and so on. Instead, it's a part of your app which handles what the user sees and touches on the screen. In other words, a view does all the things an activity or a fragment can do. Here comes the most important part though. Views handle only the immediate interaction with the user. What does this mean? Well, you simply don't put any business logic like communicating with a database inside your activities or fragments directly. Your activities or fragments, in other words, views, can only display stuff on the screen and that stuff they get from view models. They can also do Android specific operations, but you should probably separate it out into another class. But if you have something really simple to do, you can do it inside an activity or a fragment. And also views can dispatch user interaction events, obviously, which are something like clicks or swipes, and they are dispatching it to their respective view model. So most of the UI logic is actually centered in the view model. There is no real logic inside the view, except for really simple cases. Next up comes the view model. And the view model is like a glue between a view and business logic. It provides data for the view by getting it from the repository. And when you take a look at the diagram, which is now on the screen, you might wonder how does a view get all the data which it should display? The arrow is pointing only in one direction toward the view model. This means that the view model doesn't have any clue about which views are using it because it doesn't have a direct reference to it as opposed to the view which has a reference to its view model. While this is amazing for testing and simply for less entanglement between classes, which is also known as tight coupling, so we want to have loose coupling, the view model still needs to tell the view what data to display, otherwise the app will not be functional. The trick here is to make the appropriate data in view model observable. By doing this, we get rid of the need to directly update the view from the view model when data changes. A view already has a reference to its view model, so it can simply observe some data which the view model exposes. 
When the data changes, all of the views which are observing it will be notified about this change. This is contrary to model view presenter pattern, where a presenter has a reference to its view. Here, the view model doesn't have any reference to its view, but it simply exposes some data, some functions, and the view can then observe this data. This observation can be done through live data, which is a handy lifecycle aware library for creating observables. You can also use RxJava or something else if you so desire, but live data is really the first class citizen. It's also supported by Google and it's a first party library. One of the advantages of live data is that it automatically doesn't notify the observer if its activity or fragment is already destroyed. So this leaves you free from managing the life cycle yourself. Otherwise, you would need to unsubscribe from your observers in onDestroy function. Then we have the model. Model is where you put all of the business specific code. While technically there is an intermediate step between the view model and the model in the form of a repository, as you can see on the diagram, you can kind of regard everything from repository downwards as its own group of classes, which are far away from the user interface. These operate on your app's data and fetch it from the local database or from the network. Repository has a special role of being a mediator between local storage and the server. This is where you check whether the remote data should be cached locally and so on. Repository is also the single source of truth for view models, as I've mentioned previously. In other words, when a view model wants to get some data, it gets it from the repository then it's up to the repository to decide what to do next. As far as the view model is concerned, the data could be fetched from a toaster or from a supercomputer. It doesn't care. That's the business of the repository. Repository cares, view model doesn't. Now let's also talk about the connectedness of model view view model components. Not only that the view observes data in the view model, but also the view model observes data in the repository, as you can see on the diagram, which in turn observes data coming from the local database and also from the remote data source. To put this all into perspective, you can think of the connections between models, views, view models and repositories and other classes in the following manner. When traversing down the hierarchy, which you see on the screen, the upper class has a direct reference to its child. So view has a direct reference to view model, view model has a direct reference to repository, repository has a reference to model and remote data source and so on. On the other hand, the child doesn't have a reference to its parent. Children only expose some data by allowing it to be observed through live data or any other library if you so desire. So from this simple diagram, we get this arrow cluttered diagram which you can see right now. I wanted to spare you of the non-necessary clutter at the start, so that's why those observable arrows weren't present in the first diagram showing MVVM. As you can see, the solid lines represent a direct reference, whereas the dashed lines represent observables. The less important thing which I need to mention here is that you should always adhere to the reference tree which you can see right now. For example, don't make your view model get data from the database directly while bypassing the repository. Everything has its purpose and makes the code modular, easy to maintain and nice to read also. You will read your code many more times than you write it, so make readability the number one priority. Don't be lazy to create abstractions and trust me, you will thank yourself later. Alright, so that's it for this video. In the next tutorial, you will build a real Android app which utilizes the MVVM architectural pattern, so be sure that you subscribe to this channel and also hit the bell button so that you aren't going to miss it. If this tutorial helped you understand model view view model parent, give it a like and also share it so other people can learn about it too. Check out the post from the link in the video description, leave a comment, follow me on social media and see you in the next video.